Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris and today I'm going all workstation on you. Okay, so clearly you can see what I've got here is the ASUS Z97WS motherboard, the latest in their workstation series of boards for the new Z97 chipset. And the reason I went with this board is I have an editing workstation that I'm going to be building. Kind of a system that's going to be on all the time and something I'm going to be using for only work, pretty much, for the most part. Unless I sneak a game in there, here and there. But this board fit the bill and uh, JJ from ASUS was actually nice enough to get on the phone with me to go over some of the features of this board that kind of make it stand apart. So I thought I'd bust open the box, take a look at what's in there, and then do a quick overview of what makes this board kind of stand out a little bit from maybe some of the other boards in the Z97 lineup from ASUS. All right, so first things first, it's time to take a quick look inside the box. I don't want to spend too much time doing this so I can actually go over the features of the board with you. Let's slide off the front box. Ooh, it's on there pretty good. All right, there we go. Oh man, deja vu. All right, there you go. Again, graphics department got a little bit of a break on that one. All right, so here's the goods. Let's pop open the front here. Take a look inside. Now, there's lots and lots of stuff in here, so go through this really quick. You got 1394 as well as additional USB 2.0, your SLI bridge, a serial port connector, the lovely Q connectors, eight SATA connectors, four of them with a right angle and four of them straight. It's getting real now, three-way SLI bridge, and then finally the four-way SLI bridge. You've got the back plate that I love so much because it makes install so easy without everything poking out the back there. The Z97 manual, nice and, and thick, lots to read. And your driver disc and ASUS case badge. All right, now the, the piece of resistance. It's time to get out the actual board itself. And just like the ROG board, the Maximus, uh, this thing has some heft to it. It's feeling nice and sturdy. All right, so the easiest thing to do here is just work our way down the board from the top and go over everything as we go. So starting with the socket, you do have the 1150 socket there for the Z97 chipset. So you're going to be able to run Haswell, Haswell Refresh, Devil's Canyon, and Broadwell when that finally comes out, as well as Xeon chips. So this is certified for the 1150 socket variety of Xeon, like the 1230 and the 1231V3. Uh, you're not going to be able to do ECC memory though. That is something that you just can't do on the Z97 chipset. You'd need a C-series chipset in order to use ECC. So that's kind of an Intel thing that's a bummer, but you know, not a huge deal. But for some it may be, so that's important to note right off the bat. Now, you have these nice heat sinks here. They are thin, so they're kind of going for um, function over aesthetic, which is, you know, important on a workstation board because that's probably what you're focused on. And those are keeping the uh, VRM nice and cool. Of course, you've got your uh, MOSFET chokes and 12K capacitors. So you've got 12,000 hour rated caps on this board. And that actually, uh, it's the best they have of any board they make. And according to ASUS, this is their most advanced power delivery system. So what that means is not only are you going to be able to really, you know, get a good overclock off of this board, but you're also going to have a board that's going to give nice, clean, and efficient power delivery to both the chip as well as your DRAM. So you're going to be able to keep everything running a little bit cooler because of that. So even if you just want to run this in stock or even maybe underclock a little bit, if you're going to be running the board a lot and you don't want it drawing a lot of power, the DigiPlus power delivery system on here is going to be able to keep everything tweaked exactly how it should be. So even if you load this board up, everything's going to be running as cool as possible through this power delivery system. So that's one of the things that kind of allows this board to stand out a little bit. Speaking of which, we'll move over here to the RAM area of the board. You do have your four DDR3 DIMMs, and those will take up to 3300 megahertz memory with an overclock. And then speaking of overclock, right above there, uh, you've got your EPU button, and then you have your TPU. And you've got two different settings on that switch, depending on how aggressive you want it to do the automatic overclock, doing it through the hardware switch, which is going to engage the uh, UEFI BIOS to go ahead and apply the auto overclock on that for the CPU level up. Then next to that, you do have your MEM OK button for your little soft reset in case you're doing an overclock and things go awry and you need to get your you know, base clock and your frequencies and everything back to the standard so you can keep moving forward and tweaking things. And then uh, you do have more of your power delivery handling over here and more of those 12K caps. Then you do have your XMP overclock button right here. So what that essentially is, is apparently a large percentage of people out there are not applying their XMP profile overclock when they go into the UEFI. They're not thinking to do that if they're running everything at stock. So all you have to do is flip this switch and it's actually going to apply 
that XMP profile for you automatically, so you don't have to go in and do that. If that's a thing you forget, just flip that switch and then you won't have to worry about it. Then moving down, you do have what they're calling their Pro Cool Power Connector for your 24 pin, so that is actually using solid metal connections inside of here instead of hollow. So when you're pulling a full load on this board, you're actually gonna have a little bit less heat bleeding out of this because of that connection being a little more solid. So it's just gonna keep everything a little cleaner and keep the best power delivery that you can have while not generating uh, too much extra heat. So you might be able to see it looking down straight over the top of that, that those are solid pins in there. And then moving down to your connectivity, you do have two USB 3.0 headers on here. So that's nice if you've got a case, which you should if you're putting this motherboard in it that has 3.0 on the front. Uh, obviously you're gonna populate one of those doing that, but say you wanna add a card reader or something else to the case for your five and a quarter inch bay or maybe a three and a half inch bay, you have an extra connection there to be able to do that. So that's a nice little touch. And moving down, you do have your six set of 3.0, six gigabit per second ports. And then you also, in addition to that, have dual 10 gigabit per second SATA Express. So that is present on this board. And then sitting right next to that, you can see there is that M.2 socket. So that has support for both PCIe M.2, which is the faster spec, as well as the old, I guess, legacy SATA connection, which is a majority of the cards out there right now that are M.2 are that old SATA standard, but hopefully we'll be seeing the PCIe one start populating the market soon. Then along the bottom of your board, you have your usual and customary suspects down there. So you've got all of your connections for your Q connector headers. So your power and your reset, your uh, LED indicator lights, things like that are there and accounted for. And then you also have your USB and a 1394, which is nice because that's kind of becoming legacy, but if you still have hardware that uses it, you do have that connector in the box so you can plug it in there to be able to utilize that. You got your power and reset physical switches and then finally your dual Q code display. So this is going to allow you to get a little bit more information than you would off of the standard uh, two digit display. This actually has four. The reason for that being is if you're running a whole slew of cards on this board, so say you've got like you know, a capture card, you've got a graphics card, and then you've also got a RAID controller. Plus you've got your memory fully populated and you've got an overclock on that and your CPU. Things could go wrong and that's gonna allow you to dig in a little bit more in detail on what exact piece of hardware is giving you some trouble. And you actually have another variant of that which is actually even more convenient when we get to the IO on the back, so we'll look at that. And then the big star of the show here is all of your PCIe connectivity. And that's the thing that really, you know, one of the key things that sets this board apart from a lot of the other ones out there is you have a plethora of PCIe expansion here. So of course, uh, you've got your top port, which is your PCIe Gen 3 by 16, and that's either by 16 or by eight if you're running it in SLI. And then you've got your PCIe Gen 2 by one, move down from that. You've got another PCIe Gen 3 by 16. Down from there, you have a PCIe Gen 2 by four. Now this one is actually set up to use the optional Thunderbolt connector that you can get for adding Thunderbolt to the board. And then right below that is another Gen 3 by 16. Below that is a Gen 2 by one. And then the bottom of the board rounds out the Gen 3 by 16. So there's where you can get your four-way SLI going there. Again, uh, if you're running an SLI, you're not gonna get the by 16. It's gonna downstep to uh, you know, by eight or whatever it needs to do in order to run all of these. You also will notice you have additional auxiliary power right here in case you do have these all populated and you need to feed a little more juice to the board. Then looking over here at the sound card area of the board, uh, it is not separate from the rest of the board. So you don't have that little line running up here like you do on the other ASUS boards in the Z97 lineup. However, I'm told that it's still about 75 to 80% segregated from the rest of the board. So you're not gonna have too much uh, interference or bleed over from other components in the board, uh, making your audio get dirty and having too much interference. However, if uh, that's just not good enough for you with that, uh, I think it's a Realtek ALC 1158 channel audio codec on that chip. If that's not gonna cut it, you can always add an internal sound card or get uh, an external USB DAC and boom, your problem is solved. All right, then taking a look at the rear I.O., you do have your 7.1 Realtek audio outputs as well as an optical output, six USB 3.0 ports, dual Intel LAN, so you've actually got the i210 and the i218, which adds in a little bit of extra functionality if you're running something like Windows Server, you've got compliance for that. And now you've got what I like to call your uh-oh buttons. So the first one is your Q code logger. So as long as you've got auxiliary power running to the board, you can actually plug in a flash drive and hit this button and it will download any error data to that drive on a text file. So you can just open that up on another computer and it'll tell you what's gone wrong with your computer instead of having to decode what an error code might mean that shows up on the board. 
And then right next to that, you've got your USB BIOS flashback. So same rules apply, stick in a flash drive that has a BIOS on it, hit that, and if you've done something horrible to your UEFI BIOS, it will flash it back and hopefully get everything back into working order. And of course, you've uh, got eSATA, and then for your display, you've got DisplayPort, Mini DisplayPort, which that's not Thunderbolt, it is Mini DisplayPort, and HDMI. All right, so that pretty much rounds out the majority of the board. Now, some of the other things that uh, aren't too obvious that stand out, if you look next to your SATA, you've actually got a little switch called Dr. Power, and what that essentially does is keeps an eye on how much you're drawing from the board as far as power is concerned. Now, this board has a lot of power connectivity. Not only do you have your 24 pin, but then you've also got two uh, EATX 12Vs over by your CPU, and then, like I said, that additional auxiliary one for your PCI Express. So you can be pulling lots of juice from this board, and what this is gonna do is make sure that you're not pulling too much from your power supply, because if that happens and you don't know it, the system will just shut down, and you could actually damage a component like a mechanical drive or something like that if the head can't park before the board just shuts down. So it's gonna kind of give you a heads up and say, whoa, you're getting a little bit close here on your power draw, so you might wanna shut some things down, or you know, better yet, just save your apps and shut down the computer, and then uh, kind of take a look at how much energy you're drawing out of this thing. Maybe upgrade your power supply. Now the I.O. control on this board is actually pretty advanced and one of the nice things about that is it gives you a lot of functionality in the UEFI. So when, as far as your fan controls are concerned, you do have four, four pin for PWN connectors as well as two additional for CPU fan and CPU fan alt. And you can go in with those fan headers and through the UEFI, um, on, you know, basically on a hardware side, go in and set your fan curves and set all of your settings. And the really nice thing is if you put a splitter on there, you can actually split your PW fan header out to control multiple fans, but yet still have that nice, really tight degree of customizability on your PWM fan settings. And you can actually take the fans down to an extremely low RPM. So if your fan supports dropping really low, like say a nice Noctua fan, it will allow you to go really, really low where most uh, fan controller software is gonna go, Meh that's getting a little bit too low, the fan might stall. Well, this will let you override it and do it anyway if you wanna keep things nice and quiet, but still keep a little bit of air moving through the computer. And then as I touched on earlier, you do have that really nice DigiPlus power set up on the board, so that's gonna actually allow you to go in into the UEFI and have an extreme amount of customizability there as well as far as tuning your VRM and all of your power delivery options. So if you're a big overclocker or if you just like to tweak things, you're gonna have that in there as well. And then of course you do have dual intelligent processors five on this board. And one of the nice features with that is you have that intelligent auto overclocking. So unlike your ROG, your tough series boards, it's gonna be a little bit different in that instead of just saying, I want a 4.2 or a 4.4 or a 4.6 gigahertz overclock, and it just applies a general rule, this is gonna go through and dynamically overclock. So it's gonna set a 1.3 volt limit, and then it's gonna go through and go, all right, let's keep stepping up the CPU in little increments until we get to the point where we introduce instability. Once it hits that point, it's gonna put a cap right there and say, all right, that's your overclock. Some other nice features you have in the AI suite on this board, you have the Turbo app, so you can actually specify an overclock for just an individual application. You can also give it network priority and maybe optimize your audio. So if you have a game or an application like Premiere Pro and you want that to be the only thing that gets an overclock applied to it, you can actually set it up so that it only overclocks in that instance. Fan Expert 3 is there through the software, so you do have the ability to not only adjust that in the UEFI, but also do it when you're within Windows. And then of course, TPU is there for your real-time performance tuning through the DigiPlus Power, uh, along with the VRM tuning, so you can do all that in real time through the AI Suite software, as well as uh, enabling EPU for doing a little bit of energy saving as well. And finally, you've got TurboLand present on this board, so if you want to give an application priority with your network controller, you can do that, so if you're gaming or maybe you've got a big download going on, you can say, hey, I want this piece of software to be getting the best performance I can out of my network controller, so let's go ahead and make sure that that one has the priority. Another nice thing you have on the board is you do have a removable BIOS chip on here, so if your BIOS flashback tool doesn't work through the USB BIOS flashback and you've really done something horrible to your UEFI BIOS, you can actually swap out the chip, so ASUS can just send you a new BIOS chip instead of having to send in the whole board for RMA and wait for that to come back. And it kind of goes back to the old Phoenix BIOS chips, which were those really big chips back in the day that you could swap out. So it's a little mini version of that, but it's nice to see it there in case something does go awry. All right, so there you have it, the Z97WS from ASUS. Some of the other things that kind of make this board stand out from the crowd would be some higher end features like an enhanced option ROM validation process. So if you're running things like high end RAID cards, maybe a Quattro, you're gonna have a high end capture card in there, or maybe all of them in unison, 
this board is actually certified and validated to be able to run that hardware without you having to worry about having any kind of a compatibility issue or something like that when you install everything in here. So that's nice, really geared towards the super high-end market as far as that's concerned. The other nice thing is even though this does still just have the three-year warranty and not the five-year warranty that you'd find in the Tough series, it is a, it's a stronger version of that three-year warranty, I guess you could say. It's the ARS warranty, so that means you're gonna have 24-hour turnaround on your RMA process. So you're gonna be at the front of the queue, and then what's gonna happen is while that processing is going on, uh, they can actually send you out a replacement board so that your downtime is reduced to a minimum because they understand this is a workstation environment board, probably a 24-7 on environment, something you really need to be able to get your work done. And then just the usual uh, 5X protection things like having better traces on the motherboard, having diodes underneath all of your I.O., having an I.O. plate that's not going to corrode, all of those nice little touches that kind of actually that one is across the line with ASUS, but it's also on here. And then finally, like I said, that VRM, the power management system, is really advanced. So that's going to keep everything running a little bit cooler than it would maybe in some other boards, which is really important if you got a lot of stuff running on this board. And obviously with all those PCI lanes, that is a possibility. So... You know, not the board for everybody, but if you're going to have a system that you're really serious about getting work done and you really need it to be running all the time and you're going to be remoting into it while it's on like I'm probably going to be doing, then this is something to consider. So hopefully this helped you if you're kind of torn between maybe what board you want to go with and you're not really sure if this is right for you. Uh, those are some of the things that set it apart and all of the features packed onto this board do make it fairly attractive. Now another thing, uh, still didn't go through everything on the board, so if you want to go into the technical specifications of this, I'm going to go ahead and just put the link down to the product page for this, and you can go into the tech specs and dig into all the really technical goodness yourself if that's your thing. All right, well thanks for watching as always, and if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter over at Tech Uploaded, and be sure to check back because I am going to be doing my workstation build with this board, so I will be covering it and that as well kind of get some real-world hands-on experience with the board to go a little bit more in-depth on this review once I actually uh, use the board for myself. So check back for that. And you know what? Don't be a stranger. Check back soon.